you may have noticed this channel's got a couple more things happening on it now. Um, had a bit of a hiatus, I'm back, but I feel like I've got some unfinished business because I never wrapped up my devlog series on Grub Cup. So this is the video to wrap up and answer all the questions about what happened to the Grub Cup game. Uh, so brief history on Grub Cup. Um, again, there's a full devlog here, but, uh, and also like you can follow the journey uh, kind of through the Scratch the Shelf podcast channel, which I'll have in the description. But um, I, end, well, I, I finished my full-time uh, software engineering world to enter the world of games. And I started by doing tabletop games and in a very small uh, space, like small period of time, I managed to create and publish my first board game. And I'm really, really, really proud of that. So um, that's this game, Grub Cup. Um, there are a lot of uh, thoughts and ideas and playtesting and prototyping that went into it. Again, like most of this is actually on this channel. Um, pretty grateful to my previous self to to go to the energy of doing that. That's kind of cool. Um, but I, yeah, I never really ended it uh, or wrapped it up. So let's talk about what happened. Uh, at the end of July, I published it. I had a rule book. Um, you can actually check out the rule book. It's like all free on the website. Uh, I'll put it in the, in the description. Um, but yeah, I got it out there. I did some marketing. I posted it in Facebook groups. I posted it on Twitter, um, and Instagram put it everywhere basically. Cause it's pretty, pretty damn exciting that I got it done and I got it published, um, self published, but it's done. Like it was out there. Um, and yeah, that was, that's a big achievement. Then I sold out which is very cool. I sold out in a week after releasing it. Um, maybe because of the low stock, but like that was, that was still kind of really cool. Um, and I learned a bucket load about self manufacturing, self fulfillment, um, getting it shipped. Like there's a lot that goes into doing board games and I, yeah, didn't really realize, I guess. And, yeah, I think if anybody's on the fence about like, should I do this? Should I not do this? Just by the sheer amount that I learned, like go do it. Like it is so valuable as an, as an education tool. Um, but yeah, so that I sold out. That was really, really, really cool. Um, and I learned a lot about the pain of having to check my emails every morning to see if there was, uh, anybody like making an order or like the whole idea of packaging and, you know, adding like little handwritten notes and cool washi tape to like put together packages. Like that was a really cool experience doing like hand drawn stickers and stuff. Um, that, that made my like creative heart, like very happy. <laughs> and then, um, I took a bit of a break because, well, I did it. I, I made a game and sold out and all my motivation levels dropped. So I was like, cool, I'm done it. Um, but then I had some people messaging me telling me like, oh, I missed out. I really wanted a copy. And I mustered up the strength to go do it all again. Um, the hardest part with self manufacturing is, uh, making the grids like the rest, the rest that, uh, the rest of like this product, like this is all handmade at home in my apartment. Um, like the majority of this is like not too bad. The 3d printed parts. I mean, all I'm doing is changing the filament and like maybe preheating the bed and like, you know, like letting it run. Um, and the metal work is like not too bad. Like the claw clips and stuff, they're fine. Um, but the two hardest parts were, were definitely painful. So there was like the stem, uh, which is this middle black part, which you can kind of see if it comes in focus, um, but it goes through the whole length of the grub to hold it together. Um, it's like actually like not easy to get right uh, a lot of like prototyping work went into that previously, but even like, on, like after I've got the design down, like I'm, I'm like, cool, this is my template. I'm going to use this for every copy from now on making it still really annoying. Um, it uses different filament. It's like my pet G filament. So, so it's a bit stronger. Um, and then after it's like all printed, I go through the sanding process to make it nice and smooth. So it's going to like fit nicely through, um, the body and, then I like have to drill like holes in it. And yeah, in this small apartment with <laughs> plastic dust and various grits of sandpaper and doing it by hand, like that's actually a lot of work. Um, 
And then the grid, which is even worse, is kind of made of, um, what do we do for the grid? Well, there's a Cricut machine that I set up and get going. And I can only do a few uh, designs at a time on that because the space that it's set up in is like near a wall. Uh, so when it hits the wall, it like ruins all the other copies. <laughs> so I do like four of those at a time. Uh, and then once those are done, I cut them out to be like the big squares. And then I sit down and I use the weeding tool to like pull out every single square, which takes me about six minutes each. But it's like repetitive and I have to get like be really concentrated on it. Um, and then once that's done, I have to set up the ironing stuff and uh, get the lint roller on it so there's no like dust on the fabric and get the fabric ready. And then once that's all ironed on, cutting them out, getting the fabric glue to seal all the edges and then letting it dry for 24 hours. And even if the actions themselves aren't that bad, the fact that I have to kind of have this space in my apartment occupied on drying or storing these materials, or even the act of like cleaning up after, like going and washing all the paintbrushes, um, or I don't know, wiping down the table if I got glue on it and stuff, like, uh, or the cricket um, weeding stuff is like actually really messy. It like leaves like little bits of, um, I don't know what you call it. It's like vinyl, not vinyl. It's like iron on stuff, like everywhere. But it, it's difficult to clean up. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot for one component of, of a game. If I was to do this again, I would. I don't think I can do the grid again by hand. I'd have to contact a manufacturer. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot about that process. And although I was like kind of regretting it and thinking, oh, I need to change things, I decided to do it all again for round two. Um, did it all again, was super tired, annoyed at myself for accepting to do it again because I knew that I would be tired and annoyed with myself, but I did it. And then we sold out again. Also super, super, super cool. Um, yeah, so I am pretty, pretty pleased with my journey of it. Like I learned so much and we have some cool things. Oh, the second time around as well, I got this upgraded piece from Amazon for them. Uh, I think the like string part of the grub cup was one of the weaker components. So I'm really glad that, um, I worked on upgrading that and I went and tried to get the people that I knew who had copies, tried to get them the new, uh, ring. Um, if I knew that I would be like seeing them in person or something, it's, yeah, it's a bit tricky. Um, and then during, uh, like along the way, I also had like some, some issues that I didn't know that I would be expected to counter uh, encounter. Um, one example of something that was really difficult for me was one time, um, I had an international order, which is awesome. Uh, I set up international shipping and I, you know, that wasn't easy. Um, but you know, I did it and I had somebody order from overseas. That was really, really cool. Um, but Sendal that I was using, um, for like local packages, uh, I used to just like be able to like go take my packages down to like the post office or something. And with the international one, I had to have a cur courier like come to the house and pick it up. But I live in an apartment and there's no safe place for me to leave it. So I was told that, you know, when they like ring the bell, I had to like go down and be ready to like hand over the package. But it's just me. Like I'm not a business. I'm not always going to be home. I have food shopping to go do, I have events and people to go see and kind of waiting around all day for somebody to come pick up something that has no time. Like they informed me of a time, but then they just wouldn't turn up and it would be like, Oh, we'll just come back the next day. And I'm like, I'm actually a human sitting at home. This is, this is not possible. And it's not easy for me to do. Um, that was a really frustrating experience. And you know, when you're, you're about to sit at home for the third day waiting for the doorbell. You know, you get on customer service and go like, please help. Oh, my notifications are going off. Um, I just, I'll just finish this video quickly so that I can, don't have to worry about muting my computer. Um, yes, that was a thing. And then, so I've sold that a second time. Very cool. Uh, and learnt a lot. Very cool. But now I've still got people asking for more copies and I don't know if I have the energy to do it again. Um, in all honesty, the grids are really painful to do and I'm just don't, don't really have that motivation to kind of do it all again. I think if I wanted to do more with this game, it 
first step would be to go to a manufacturer, but because I'm in this weird limbo scenario where I'm like, I'm not really sure if I'm leaving the country yet. Um, and when that's happening, I don't really want to set up anything like big or concrete. Like, um, it's still very much a hobby for me, uh, these days. And I feel like going to a manufacturer would be like, this is now like a big business decision to make. And I'd want like a base of operations where I can say, yep, this is, this is where my stock is kept. And, um, I have like a system going, but yeah, when I'm not sure if I'm moving or not, I don't want to set anything up just yet. So we're just waiting. Um, and I will spend my time doing things that I find more fun and exciting instead. Uh, kind of dabbling in video game stuff at the moment, like video game development and also content creation. As you'll see, this channel is going to have more and more stuff uh, popping up over time. Um, but yeah, that's currently the state of Grub Cup. It's like, I don't really have to do anything on it and I'm not super excited to do anything on it. Um, it had its time. I'm really proud of myself. I think it was an awesome journey. Uh, and yeah, I just don't feel like a big need to work on it past that. I, w I would call it a success. And um, yeah, it's time to move on to some other great projects and maybe revisit it like down the track um, when I'm ready to, to kind of like be, be more into the world of making tabletop games, which is something I, I definitely do intend on revisiting. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you actually are interested in tabletop development things, I would highly recommend going to check out the From Scratch to Shelf podcast channel. Um, I will have all the details in the, in the description. And if you want to see the rule book for Gr Grub Cup, it's like free and like it's just on the website. Um, again, in the description at froggyballfan.club. Um, but yeah, on From Scratch to Shelf, it's a podcast channel where we just like sit and talk about all things making board games in Australia. Um, and yeah, there's some like awesome people with like amazing knowledge that they're willing to spend their time sharing with the people on YouTube. Uh, if you have any interest, like go check them out. Um, or I'd say them, but it's like me as well. So go check us out. <laughs> um, but yeah, hope you have a lovely day. Hope you enjoy the rest of all the things coming on this channel soon. And that was... What happened to Grub Cup?